Okay, let's continue. Uh, by the way, a small announcement. The course evaluations are going to be done uh, after the class, uh, uh, as soon as the class ends. And it's, I think it's, yes, uh, you already did it, okay. <laughs> okay, thank you. So uh, now let's get back to our problem. Uh, how are we going to de determine whether uh, vertex wi is visible from a vertex uh, V by using the current status of the plane sweep, rotational plane sweep. So the first, I mean, the, the case is, uh, I mean, if in the status structure, if there is an edge that, are cl that is closer than WI, it means we just say that WI is not visible. Okay, so this is, this is obvious, but now, uh, let's consider the case where there is no such edge that properly intersects this, uh, this line segment VWI, okay? It's not intersected. This line segment VWI is not intersected by any edge. Uh, now, uh, is it guaranteed that WI is going to be visible? Can you think of a case in which WI is not visible? Another? Another event point. Uh, now that we also need to discuss this. Uh, so another event point, let's say. Uh, so actually, this is we need to discuss these cases in which on the same uh, half line, what happens if there are multiple event points? And then a natural order to process them is to process them with respect to their uh, closeness. So if when we, during the sorting, when we were doing the sorting with respect to the angles, if two vertices have the same angle, we just check the distance of these vertices to, to V and we are going to uh, process the ones that are closer first. Okay, so if there's another point on this line, uh, VWI, uh, it is processed before WI. Okay, so for example, I can just say it WI minus one. It was the event point processed just before it. But now let's discuss the cases if WI minus one can be something like this. Maybe the uh, upper point of a triangle. Now we need to uh, decide whether in such cases, are we going to treat uh, V also sees WI? I mean, is it, uh, but since we allow our path to touch obstacles, okay, we can, since our path uh, goes through vert obstacle vertices, it means that the obstacles are open poly polygons. It's not the, I mean, the, their vertices are allowed to be uh, in the free space and edges are also, it's only the interior is the forbidden part. So it means that we can also, uh, I mean, we can, in, in such cases, we can say that V also sees WI in, in such a case. I mean, it doesn't, this, this vertex here does not prevent us to draw a straight line directly from V to uh, WI because this is, we are allowed to be in this position. It's a, this vertex is a legal position that we can step into. So we can also, since it's a legal position that we can is, step into, it's part of the free space. So it means that uh, V sees WI. In such cases, we can say v, uh, v sees WI. But is there, can you think about any other case in which uh, there's going to be no edges in between V and WI, but uh, we'll, we are not going to see WI? In the other direction, uh, like for example, WI here, but it's going to be, I mean, then, then our sweep line is uh, in that direction. I mean, uh, the way we draw it, I mean, we cannot change WI here. So WI is here. So you need to, in order to think about cases, you need to put something in between here to make it non-visible. So the question is, can you put something here in between V and WI, which is going to occlude WI, but no edges intersect in this line? It seems impossible, right? <laughs> uh, but uh, let me draw you something which is going to show you that it is possible. This is an obstacle itself, okay? 
when this where this is wi minus one. And at this point, this line, it's not intersected by any edges, okay? At this point, these edges just removed from the uh, sweep line. I mean, I, actually, this is not removed. We first check it's visible or not, but it depends on whether you treat this as an intersection or not. I mean, just one, one end point on that vertex. I mean, even, even at that point, uh, WI is going to be at the same point, and uh, these ones, actually, we are also going to have this vert this edge as well. Just just try to debug trace the algorithm. What happens at wi minus one? So when we come to wi, what is the study, how does the study structure look like? Let's name these edges. I'm just naming the relevant edges. When I come to wi. At that point, let me just also name W, for example, I minus two. Okay, this is the previous event point that was visited first. If I'm doing counterclockwise uh, ro rotation. So this was W I minus two. At when I come to W I minus two, E1 and E2 are in the study structure. Okay, then I come to W I minus one. I delete E1 from the study structure. It's not going to be, since I'm doing rotational sweep this way, WI, uh, E1 is going to be deleted, and E3 is going to be added to the study structure. Right? I mean, according to the algorithm just I wrote in the previous uh, hour, uh, E1 is deleted, E3 is added at event point WI minus 1. Because I'm doing rotational sweep here, uh, this line starts intersecting E3, and it ends intersecting E1 at that position. Now, when I come to WI, E2 and E3 are the two edges in the, uh, uh, in the study structure. And actually, none of them properly intersect the half line. I mean, they just intersect at the end points. OK, actually, uh, E2 is adjacent to W2. W, w, WI, and E3 is not adjacent to it, uh, but uh, again, this half line does not intersect E3 properly. So are we going to treat intersection at endpoint as intersections or not? And according to our previous definition, like this, if we say that we are going to treat this edge as a non-intersecting edge or, or something like this, it would be even I mean, at that point, these two edges may be in the uh, study structure. If we are going to treat this edge intersection with this half line as a non-intersection, I mean, to see that, to determine that this one sees this, we need to make that decision. And in that case, E3 and E2 does not violate the, the I mean, it doesn't say that we, we WI is obstructed by E3. Okay, E3 does not obstruct. I mean, this edge here does not obstruct. But what obstructs WI, what occludes WI, is the polygon, ins the inside of the polygon. So, and the such cases can only occur if this WI minus one and WI are the vertices of the same obstacle. Okay, if uh, they are the vertices of the same obstacle, we can have such cases. The interior uh, being so and. Uh, actually, this can be checked easily by just looking at the previous event point, WI minus 1. Uh, first of all, if the previous event point, WI minus 1, if it wasn't visible, then there's no way WI is going to be visible. Okay? So we can just first check uh, in, the, if in, in, the, in the case that this v, uh, VWI contains another event point uh, on it. Uh, we just check whether there is another event point on this line, like WI minus 1, and then check whether WI minus 1 is visible itself. If WI minus 1, the previous event point on the same line, was not visible, I mean, that, that invisibility goes to all the way to the end, to infinity along this line, so WI is also going to be not visible uh, if WI minus 1 is not visible. But if it is visible in that case, if they are part of the same polygon, we can just check, we can, this is also in the, 
doubly connected edgeless record. I mean, you can just incident face records. The incident face column of the vertices, we can just check whether wi minus 1 and wi minus 1, if their faces, incident faces are the same. If their incident faces are the same, all we, we need to do is, we need to, how can, how can we do this efficiently? Whether, to understand whether this line is inside or the polygon by intersecting. Is there, for example, if the polygon was something like this, I mean, it's a degenerate polygon. <laughs> uh, in that case, it's not in the inside. I mean, if it was a convex polygon, uh, if these two are not adjacent, if, if it was a convex polygon, if wi minus 1 and wi were not adjacent vertices, then it's guaranteed, this line is guaranteed to be inside of the, uh, that's, that's the uh, definition of convexity. But uh, if we are not dealing with convex polygons, if they can be any uh, simple polygon, we can have other things like this. We need to check this line between these two whether it's outside or inside the convex polygon. Can we do this check efficiently? Uh, that's the problem. If this check needs on time in the worst case, then the n log n inside that becomes n squared. Uh, we cannot have, so we get back to the n cube complexity. So we need to somehow uh, try to identify whether WI, I mean whether this line segment uh, is inside an obstacle or not efficiently. Any ideas on that? So the book does not give a solution to that. Uh, the book just says that in such a case, I mean just say it's the, if the whole segment is inside the lies inside in, in an obstacle, then uh, we can, WI is not visible. Okay, so it must be obvious then, <laughs> if the book does not, so there must be an obvious solution uh, to check whether this line segment, WI minus one WI, for which both of them are the vertices of the same obstacle polygon, okay? This is what we know. We know that they are the vertices of the same obstacle polygon. And we want to find out whether this is contained uh, in, uh, whether this one intersects the, that polygon edge. Uh, is there a way to do this efficiently? That's the next step. So, and what we know here is that we know, we know the order of vertices along this. Since this polygon is given to us as an ordered uh, set of vertices, so we can uh, traverse these ones easily. But if we are going to traverse all of them, I mean, if this was a very large polygon, it could contain all the end edges of all our ops. I mean, the complexity, I mean, we should avoid this uh, going over all the edges. I mean, the, comp the worst case complexity may become, I mean, may become n square and the, may lead to n cube complexity in the worst case. But in practice, I mean, we are just dealing with a single obstacle. <laughs> so probably uh, we are just uh, going to spend a small amount of time here. But in order, uh, theoretically, in order to guarantee n square log n, we may also need to prove that this case does not cause a problem. What? Oh, okay, so we have, we have these two edges, and we have this one. If uh, it lies in between. <laughs> yeah, maybe we can, we, can have, we can have a solution like that. The, so to decide whether this one is inside, I mean, just like we were doing the counter, I mean, clockwise, counterclockwise traversal, since we know this, uh, maybe, I mean, if we can, if we disregard polygons such as these, as, as I mean, like a this is like a degenerate polygon in which a single vertex is like, there are two faces, this is not a single face, it's like two faces, 
uh, shared by a vertex. I mean, this is this may even not be a. I mean, it's not a simple polygon. Uh, if we just uh, for even uh, I mean non-convex polygons, but simple polygons. Uh, all we need to do is, if this is a vertex, yeah, you, you may need to do something similar. To, I mean, if this is a vertex of the polygon, can you think about cases in which? Okay, so this is W i minus one W i, and these are uh, W i minus two. And let's say, for example, WK. Now, one, one thing that could happen is that, for example, we could have something like this. Okay? Even in such, such case, it means that we, in, in this case, it means that V WI minus 1 is not visible because of things here. So this is not going to be visible. So we cannot have such a convex polygon that goes this way, because it means uh, I mean W i minus is not going to be visible in that case. We can directly deduce W i is not visible. So we are looking for cases which in which W i could be visible. W i minus one is visible, and W i minus one will can be visible as well. Can there be uh, cases like this? I think it's impossible, right? I mean, if this is, I mean, if this is visible, and if this is the vertex of the same polygon, I mean, there must be. If I mean, since these are these two edges, it means that this part is inside of an obstacle, right? I mean, just the just the immediate neighborhood of I mean, neighborhood of this is interior. I mean, if we know if this is outside, if this is, I mean, this is a, these two edges are bounding this face. And if we know if this part is the free space, if this part is outside of the uh, polygon, this epsilon, if you just go epsilon towards here, it's going to be inside of the polygon. So it's actually, it was obvious actually. So if wi minus, if they are part of the same polygon, wi is always going to be not visible. If we have uh, something, oh okay. Yeah, but yeah, if this w i if, if this w i minus two was something like this, if it was something like that, then they could be visible. They are they are the vertex of the same polygon. So you're right. We need to check. So in order again, but this can be done no one. I mean, we, by just looking at w i minus two as well to see whether it has any vertices below this. Uh, I mean, if w i minus two was somewhere below, then then this is going to be inside, and it's not going to be visible. So it is possible to decide on this visibility or non-visibility uh, of vertices that are uh, incident to the same face, same polygon in O1 time. So uh, we don't need to do ON, ON checks. By just looking at the neighboring uh, vertices, we can decide whether it's going to be uh, visible or not. So the final algorithm uh, we, uh, becomes like this. If there is an edge closer to WI, it's not visible. If not, we check whether uh, there is a WI minus one on the same event line. And based on if that WI minus one is not visible, again, WI is not going to be visible. These are the two cases not visible. And otherwise, uh, it's going to be uh, visible if, uh, and when we do this O1 check, if WI minus one is visible, we check whether it's, I mean, if, and it's part, if they are the part of the same polygon, uh, we check whether this polygon completely lies above or uh, some part of it is under. So this, this is the check we need to do. I mean, the only case it's going to be visible if this uh, polygon is com it completely lies above or completely lies below it. It may be the other case as well. If the polygon completely lies below, Again, we can do it. But if some part of the polygon is above and some part of the is, be is below, uh, this WI, since we know this part is the free space, it's, it's a, there has to be some uh, face that we are bounding to the right of this WI minus one. So it's going to also occlude uh, WI. So um, the final algorithm uh, becomes uh, like this. This visibility check can be done in log n time by using this set of structure. After we defi def uh, find these visibility graph, 
which vertices are visible from which other vertices, uh, we just conduct uh, Dijkstra's shortest path algorithm on this visibility graph uh, to find the shortest path. So one thing that is in this visibility graph, our start position and goal position also appear as vertices. And it doesn't, we can just find which, vertice, which other vertices are visible from these start and goal positions, just similar to, just treating them as an obstacle vertex uh, is, not, is not going to, uh, we don't need to change the algorithm, okay? Just uh, this algorithm that we define is capable of finding just an arbitrary, pick an arbitrary vertex. It doesn't need to be part of an obstacle polygon, okay? This arbitrary vertex, it just finds which other vertices uh, it sees. Uh, so the algorithm, uh, we conclude the algorithm like this. And in conclusion, with this plane sweep algorithm, rotational plane sweep, we can find the visibility graph in n square log n time. And now let's, what about the shortest path finding? What's the complexity of Dijkstra's shortest path? It's linear in the size of the graph, right? Linear in uh, number of edges. So number of edges plus number of vertices, something like that. Uh, and the number of edges in this Dijkstra's, uh, in this visibility graph can be at most what? N square. If I have N edges, uh, if I have N polygon vertices, if I have N nodes in this graph, if it was a complete graph, it would be N square. Uh, there would be N square edges. So. Uh, so it seems that this n square log n dominates the complexity. The Dijkstra's shortest path can be done in n square, and that's the uh, so that's the end of the uh, visibility graph uh, chapter. Now, what about the path? Uh, the shortest path you find. Can you bound uh, the number of vertices on this path? I mean, if you're, you are finding a path from start to goal, uh, how many vertices at most uh, can it visit on this shortest path? Do you have any uh, idea about, uh, can it be n square? I just, n square vertices, no, there are, there are already n vertices. So in the shortest path, it's, it's, the shortest path is a simple path, means that we don't, uh, visit a vertex more than once. There are no cycles on this path, okay? In a, in a path between start and goal, uh, we just visit each vertex once. That's how the algorithm proceeds. I mean, we mark vertices visited and unvisited, and a visited vertex is not visited uh, again. So in this path we find from start to goal, we have each vertex uh, a single time, uh, uh, once, and therefore uh, the path we find is going to be, uh, is going to contain n vertices at most. But it should, most of, can, can it be, uh, is it really a, a tight bound? I mean, uh, because it seems like with a path that visits every polygon vertices, it seems like a, a very long path. I mean, can you bound it even uh, smaller? Is it, maybe, is it log n? Can you say it log n or even maybe square root of n? Uh, so is this bound tight? Uh, I mean, uh, are in a path from start to goal, at most we know that we are going to visit all the vertices, but is there an example in which all the vertices of the obstacles are visited on this path? So this is exercise one in your book, uh, in that chapter. So Define maybe maybe not all of them. Maybe this is we are thinking uh, in in big O notation. Uh, now this is the theta notation. Uh, can you maybe n o, not all n edges, but n over two of those edges? Can you find an example uh, in which you have obstacles? You visit n over two. You have to visit n over two of those edges. Uh, I think you can have an example like that. I mean, can you uh, think about a set of obstacles? For example, if you just have a set of triangle obstacles, putting those triangles such that each triangle has to be touched along this path gives an uh, uh, I mean, it gives a worst case example. 
there because in that if you there, since there are n edges, there are n over three triangles. Okay, n over three is O n. So it's uh, just if you can show that you can uh, position those triangles so that your path has to touch all of these triangles uh, gives us a uh, worst case. Um, gives the shows us that the, our bound is tight. Our bound of uh, on uh, the path is going to contain this many uh, edges is a tight bound by showing an example which, in which this worst case complexity occurs. So how can we position these triangles so that they are going to be? I mean, I, you can just show a simple example, maybe three triangles. I mean, if this is here and if this is here, I mean, probably you, you go something like this, okay? So and, ex finding examples may not be difficult or, or maybe not. I mean, this may be a shorter path in which the middle triangle is not visited. But uh, you get the idea. Our, the, to solve this problem, we need to position them so that even this one, uh, this one does not see directly. So uh, we need to uh, go through all the triangles, touch each triangle in order to go from start to go. Okay, do you have any questions about the visibility graphs? The last thing I'm going to talk about is what happens if all the obstacles, obstacles are convex polygons? Okay, do we, uh, the visibility graph, can it be computed simpler? This is exercise 15.7 in the book. Okay, let me just read it. When all obstacles are convex polygons, we can improve the shortest path algorithm by only considering common tangents uh, rather than all visibility edges. Okay, so instead of having a visibility graph, we can have a common tangent graph okay, for uh, finding the shortest path. Okay, starting instead of, we are not going to ch check whether they are all visible. We are going to just look at common tangents between these convex uh, polygons. But it's interesting. I mean, are these, first of all, the common tangents, we know that they are already existing in the visibility graph. I mean, if there's a common tangent to two convex polygons, but, uh, for, but this is, we need to also consider other vertices as well, right? For example, here, I mean, the, the tangent can be at, a, at an edge or tangent to a polygon can also be at a vertex. So this is like also a tangent to that. For example, this is a, a common tangent of these two polygons, okay? So this, this line I draw here is a common tangent of these polygons. Also, what I draw here is also, I mean, the, the tangent can graze uh, edges or it can touch vertices like this. However, look at this common tangent. I mean, if there is another polygon in the middle, that common tangent is not, no longer appears as an edge in the visibility graph. Okay, so this is a common tangent, but uh, these are also common tangents. So after finding common tangents, we also need to determine uh, whether they intersect with each other. Uh, for example, I mean, whether for example, this, this common tangent intersect with this polygon, uh, with this polygon, so this one, this edge, should not appear in the visibility graph because it's not a valid edge. It passes through a polygon. But these are valid edges. This, common, this part of the common tangent and this part of the common tangent is, a visible, uh, is, is an edge in the visibility graph. So let uh, the question says is that we can improve the shortest path instead of, uh, instead of having all the visibility edges, just take the subgraph. A subgraph in this visibility edge graph is going to contain some common tangents. So by just looking at this common tangents, uh, it gives us the shortest path. Now, the first part of the, so this is a difficult exercise. The first part is to prove that 
only visible edges that are required in the shortest path algorithm are the common tangents of the polygon. So we need to first prove that if uh, this is in, in, the, in the shortest path that we find in the visibility graph, if we are uh, having all the obstacles are convex polygons, the edges in the shortest path are common tangents. Okay, the only edges that are on the shortest path are common tangents of these polygons. First, we need to, if we can prove this, we can just then say that if this, in this visibility graph, if our goal is just to find the shortest path, we can just prune this graph to remove all the visibility edges that are not common tangents. Okay, so reduce the, uh, this is going to reduce the graph. But uh, how can we prove the first part? So in the visibility graph, uh, when we are moving along a path in the shortest path, all the edges on the shortest path are common tangents to uh, these polygons. First. Okay, this is obvious. I mean, when, we, when I draw it like this, okay, this, this line is a common tangent to these two polygons, but uh, what visibility edges are not common tangents? Let's also uh, try to uh, uh, think about the reverse case. Uh, can you uh, give an example on this visibility graph, an edge in this visibility graph, which is not a common tangent of these two polygons? of two polygons. Uh, any ideas? I mean, just for example, let's draw other, other things. I mean, if, if I, I will, con again, we need to have convex things here. Uh, for example, this one sees this one, sees this one, this one. I mean, even, even these are common tangents. I mean, can you uh, think? Yeah, this is what I'm asking. Is, there, is it possible to have a non common tangent visibility edge on this graph? I mean, it's, we need to think about this. But it's still, I mean, at that point, it's one of, there are going to be two common tangents which are intersecting at that point. So, oh, okay, something like this. Yeah, yeah, we can have non-common tangents. I mean, non-common, for example, look at this. If this was like this, okay, look at this vertex, look, look at this edge. Okay, let me just, yeah, let me draw it in a separate place. Okay, now, now it's, it's going to be easier to prove it, okay? Now, uh, look at this, look, look at this one. And look at this, and look at this edge. Is this a common tangent? No, because this, this one just, I mean, gets through this polygon. So this line is not a tangent line, but this vertex sees this other vertex. So this is a visibility edge, which is not a common tangent. Okay, but as you can see, I mean, it's obvious that this on this path going here does not help us. Okay, going here does not help us because we cannot penetrate through this uh, obstacle. I mean, if you, if you come here, the next step is going here or going here. But since you all also see these two things, these, these are shorter paths, then I mean, what we need to first prove is that such edges, this edge is going, never going to be chosen in the shortest path. Okay, so I mean, we probably we can prove this by contradiction by showing examples like this. I mean, uh, if, I mean, if imagine this was part of the shorter, short, short, uh, shortest path, we would probably be able to draw these edges, which is going to be by triangular inequality. This edge is going to be shorter than these two edges. But we need to show that such we can always draw such. So it's like if we have a convex polygon, 
if a vertex sees the one in the middle, it always sees, sees the other adjacent vertices. Is it, is it the case in convex polygons? I mean, what I'm saying is that if I have vi, vj, vk, if w sees vi, it always sees vj or vk as well. I mean, in this, in this case, but uh, I, mean, I mean, we are seeing vi, but I mean, here, what we want, I mean, we are seeing it, but we want to show, is that, show that this edge uh, is not going to be the edge we want to visit. Uh, this edge is not going to be traversed in the short, shortest path. Okay, we are, we are interested in shorter, shortest paths now. If the, uh, I mean, even if, for example, if the, if the goal is here, I mean, we are never going to go this way anyway, but uh, here we want to prove that this edge can never be part of the short, shortest path. I mean, we, we, can, we can see all of them. Again, we are going to be seeing it, but we are trying to find the short, short path, shorter path. Oh, okay, if your goal is VI, uh, and then it's going to be like the last step. Uh, so the, the goal, the star and the goal uh, are not part of polygon word, so there are some points in the free space. So they are not, uh, in that case, that's like an extreme case, what you're saying is if the, if the goal is part of a polygon vertex, in that case, uh, yeah, what you drove to that when you, I mean, this, this, this may not necessarily be a common tangent in that case. But, but, but this is, I think, uh, we need to also make, uh, when we are des describing the problem, we say that the start and goal points are not part of any polygon vertices, okay? They're just points in free space, okay? When they are points in free space, we are not going to uh, have, have such a case. So the start and goal are given as points in the free space, and the obstacles are given as separate uh, convex polygons. So we need to prove that such an edge uh, can never uh, occur in the shortest path. And I think it can be proven uh, by the, I mean, in, if W sees uh, WI in convex polygons, uh, it has to uh, see these two as well, right? Is it, is it the case if, uh, can you orient this uh, convex polygon so that this is not the case? So the, the thing that we are going to show is that it's always possible to shorten the path uh, by, using, by selecting a common tangent instead of a non-common tangent edge. Okay, so if we can do it, the next step is just we, if we don't need these edges, you can just remove them from the graph. So your original visibility graph may be very dense, very crowded. Uh, you just uh, remove them uh, from this graph. But can we, OK, removing from this graph still does not decrease the complexity. You first find all of them and <laughs> remove all of them. It doesn't, uh, now, the question is, while building the visibility graph, can you make use of this fact to speed up the building of the visibility graph? First of all, common tangents, again, it's quadratic, like, like the, there are n square common tangents between n polygons. If we have n, n, n obstacles, there are n square uh, uh, common tangents. The problem is that not all of the common tangents are part of the visibility graph. That's the problem. The, the example I draw here, there was a common tangent between two, but there was a polygon in between that was intersecting this common tangent. So this common tangents should not be part of the visibility graph. So can we find efficiently which common tangents are going to be part of the visibility graph? So that's the next step we need to uh, answer uh, to solve this exercise. So let's look at part B. So we, we did part A. I, I mean, we still work out the technical details. I'm just showing it on a single example is probably not enough. And we need to show that this is always the uh, case. Um, but, uh, but probably the proof is going to follow uh, similar lines, okay? So by showing, by assuming a non, uh, t 
common tangent edge and showing that there's a shorter path that, that there exists. Now, uh, the part B shows, tells us that give a fast algorithm to find the common tangents of two disjoint convex polygons. So now it's like oh, each part of the exercise uh, brings us to the solution maybe, is going to bring us to the solution maybe. So given two polygons, two convex polygons, can we find their common tangents uh, fast? Okay. And all the common tangents. An obvious common tangent uh, is, it's, it's not really obvious actually, but let's see. By finding their lower most vertices and drawing a line that passed through them, is it going to guarantee, uh, so given two convex polygons, find all the common tangents between these two polygons. Find the, the lowermost point of this one and the lowermost point of this one. It's not going to be a common tangent, uh, but for example, we can Okay, so how can we do it in uh, linear uh, in terms of the, if this one is n and this one has m vertices, is, it, is there a solution that exists in linear time, in linear in the number of vertices of these polygons? Finding the uh, common tangents. I, 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 there's a technique called rotating calipers technique, uh, which actually works on a single polygon. For example, so let, let me talk about, let me tell you about this, this technique, rotating calipers. It's a really nice technique which can be uh, applied to many different problems. One of the problems it's applied to is, given a convex polygon, can you find the diameter of this polygon? In other words, can you find the vertices that are most distant from each other? Okay, uh, one solution is uh, an yn square solution. Uh, just check all the pairs of vertices and pick the farthest, the, the, the ones that are most far away. Now, the linear solution uh, is like this. It's the rotating calipers. The rotating calipers, it's in Turkish, uh, it's, uh, I mean, the Turkish is not going to even make sense. I mean, probably you didn't even hear. Uh, so it's, it, let me describe the, uh, it's, a, it's a tool that is used in construction or other, so calipers uh, uh, is a tool. It's like this, okay? It has two parallel, it's metal, so it has two parallel uh, edges like this, uh, which you can uh, shorten and uh, lengthen it, okay? I mean, it's, it's like this, there's probably a lever, something like this that you can turn on, which is going to increase the distance or decrease the distance between these two uh, parallel metal things. The, the invariant thing here is that they're always parallel. So they're used to measure the width of something. For example, in order to measure the width of something, you just uh, put these, your object in between them, and by just uh, making them uh, closer to each other, you, you, you can, it's also there's like a, a ruler here which tells you the distance between these two things, okay? So uh, this algorithm uh, is called rotating calipers because it makes use of two parallel lines and the invariant of the algorithm is these two lines are always parallel to each other, okay? So these two parallel lines, uh, they start, uh, we can, draw two parallel lines in a convex polygon by having the minimum and maximum y-coordinates. By finding out the ma minimum and maximum y-coordinate of this uh, convex polygon, we can draw ourselves the first pair of uh, calipers, rotating calipers. Then the algorithm proceeds by rotating them uh, mutually. I mean, if you, you look at this angle, alpha, and you look at this angle, theta, whichever is smaller, you rotate the calipers in that amount. So this next position of the caliper is going to be something like that. Okay. 
Uh, so this is alpha. Alpha was smaller than theta. Okay. So here, also at each rotation, what we see is that this uh, we are either uh, tangent to an edge, or this caliper is going to be uh, touching a vertex. And the vertices on the other parts of these calipers are called antipodal pairs. They are like in different poles. They are two different poles of the convex polygon. So you are going to be, with this rotation, you are visiting all possible polar pairs in the uh, upper pole and lower pole. And uh, this rotation, this, when you are doing this rotation, you are going to be visiting, I mean, the, these angles, the, this iteration, when, you, when this upper caliper comes to the, I mean, if you do 180 degree rotation, you are going, they are just going to switch e each other places, but this rotation is going to be done in ON steps, okay? The, you are just looking at either you increment this or you increment this, so you are doing these increments in the number of edges you have, so you are uh, in linear time, you are going to be uh, only considering these pairs, checking the distance in between them, and maintaining the maximum distance. Okay, so instead of on square time, in on time you can find the diameter of a, a convex polygon. Now, can we use a similar rotating calipers technique to find the common tangents of these two uh, convex polygons? So this is what I was... Uh, uh, thinking, I was thinking about a solution based on uh, using rotating calipers. Probably it can be used. I have seen rotating calipers can be used uh, for many different problems. And I remember one of the problems it solves is the common tangents of convex polygons. It can find uh, unions of convex polygons, for example. It can be used to find uh, different techniques. But uh, I'm just going to uh, stop here, okay? Uh, just uh, describe the tool that you can use to find the common tangents, but I'm not going to find the common tangents uh, here. Next week, um, we are going to talk about convex hulls in three space. Okay, so uh, in three dimensions, uh, how can we com compete to convex hulls? This is going to be like the convex, uh, the convex hull is going to be a convex polyhedra uh, in three dimensions. We are going to uh, at least talk about three dimensions in at least one class in this semester. It was always two dimensional of uh, the whole semester, but at least let's see if we can extend uh, these things to three dimensions uh, in the last week. Okay, no homeworks uh, for the last week, so you are going to have in total six homeworks. The, the last programming assignment was the sixth one, so in total you had six homeworks in this semester. And our final date is also set. It's, I think, the 13th of, uh, 13th of January, 9.30 a.m., right? So in the morning. So 13th of January uh, is Friday. Uh, is it Wednesday? Okay, so 6th of January is Friday. So 13th is also Friday. So 13th of January is a Friday the 13th. <laughs> okay, so it's, it's going to be a scary day for you. <laughs> the, the final <laughs> computational geometry final. <laughs> okay, so see you at 9.30 in the morning. Uh, in, I mean, I'm going to see you next week as well. <laughs> so let me <laughs> uh, leave this final co <laughs> comment for next week. <laughs> okay, see you next